G'day guys, Pete, Pete's Tools, awesome to see you here again. Hey, today I want to have a bit of a yarn about the two most popular torches for the Cut 40 or the Cut 50 machine. And, uh, you know, troubleshooting them both. Uh, they both have their little idiosyncrasies, that's a big word for me, eh? Hey? Idiosyncrasy. <whistles> Pete, wow, you swallowed a dictionary today. Anyway guys, um, I'll tell you a few tips and tricks with these torches and um, how to get around them. Same as usual guys, if you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and uh, we'll get into this video. So guys, the most common torches that come with the Cut 40 or a Cut 50 machine that I've managed to figure out anyway are like an AG60 or a PT31 or an LG40. And the PT31 and the LG40 are basically the same torch. But um, these two torches have sort of different things that go wrong with them. They're really basic to fix, but um, just as long as you know what's, what's going what with them, then you should be fine. Anyway, we'll um, pull the bits and we'll have a look, eh? So the AG60 torch is not too bad actually guys, you just got your ceramic cup on it like so. So we'll just um, take them off. And with these um, cutting tips, they're screwing, which is a really good idea because they can't vibrate really. You just screw them up finger tight like so, and they can't really vibrate. And I'll show you the um, PT31 in a minute and I'll just show you the difference. And these ones here have the electrode, I just do them finger tight like that. They don't need to be any more than that, just tight, tightish, you know. Uh, so, so you can undo them, but once again it has a thread in it like that, so that's good that it can't vibrate around. And uh, but, but these torches and consumables are a little bit dearer than the PT31s, that's probably why they've got threads and that sort of thing on them. They just um, made a little bit different in the factory. But it was also, you've also got to watch with these torches as well. There's a, a ceramic ring in here that you, that is built into the torch, and sometimes it gets brittle and it'll crack. And if it gets brittle and it cracks, It'll arc out between the, the center and the outside and it won't give you a proper cut. It'll start spluttering and spurting and, and you know, sometimes when you cut with your, your cut 40 or your cut 50 machine and it starts spluttering in the cut, it could be this here, the ceramic here has got a crack in it and even a hairline crack will do it because the, the electricity, the arc will jump across it and, it, and it, it sort of, you know what I mean, you can sort of feel it vibrating in the torch. So uh, I just checked that. But other than that, these, these torches, these AG60s, are uh, normally a pretty pretty good torch, pretty reliable torch. Like I say, um, good consumables. Uh, they're only single-use consumables, though. But once again, like I say, you just screw them in, which is a lot better, really, than the PT31. It's just a little bit dearer, these ones. And uh, you put the cutting tip on the top and screw that in as well. And also the um, ceramics here, just watch you don't get hairline cracks or anything in there because once again the arc will jump across and it'll, um, it'll distort your cutting pattern. So uh, yeah, but other than that, these torches are, are pretty good. I like, the, um, I like the AG60 torch. That's on a lot of you guys' machine. A uh, really nice, reliable torch. Really good. Um, but the one I use most is the PT31. And the PT31 has a little bit more issues than what the AG60 does. The PT31 torch has its own issues as well, and this will probably have a few more issues than the AG60, like I just told you. But once again, the torches are a little bit cheaper, and the consumables are cheaper, so you've got to expect a little bit, a little bit of stuff that you have to put up with, you know. So, uh, as you guys already know, these are all reversible tips and all the rest of it. Now, the problems you have going to have with these torches are this. This is the main problem that I've found with these torches. Sometimes, and I don't know if it's just me or it's you guys as well, because I've, I've used a lot of these consumables over the years. Sometimes when you put your consumables into the torch, they don't fit properly. They, uh, this torch is not too bad. And I don't know if it's the torch bodies or it's actually the consumables. I've, I've actually had it in both cases. So um, you got your, your normal double-ended electrode there, you got your swirl ring here, and then you got your cutting tip there. So we'll put this together and I'll show you on this one. Show you exactly what I mean. So we'll put them together like so. Not like that. Now, yeah, not a problem. See that consumable in there? It's nice and tight. That's all good. It's really good. But I'll show you one with a different torch. Now I'll show you a different PT31 torch. Now I don't, like I said, I don't know if you guys had this problem the same as me. But you see this consumable in here. See how that's loose? And you'll think, oh, well, Pete, you haven't put in something in there. Something's missing out of there. But we'll pull it a bit and I'll show you. So we've got a ceramic cup here. We've got the cutting nozzle here. We've got your swirl ring here. And we've got your double end electrode here. This is just a nickel plated one, but it's exactly the same. And we've got the torch body exactly the same as what the first one was. So why is this loose in here? Look, I'll show you again. So we'll put it together. 
Like I say, I don't know if this is just for me or you guys have struck it as well. You go like that, you get your new consumables, you put them in, and it's loose in the, in the torch head. Now what I've come to conclusion is, it's either in the factory, because there are so many factories in China that make these cheap little consumables, that it's like half a mil or, or a really small amount difference in the manufacture of these. And because these torches have so little tolerance, that um, it might not be fitting in there properly. But there's a real issue having your consumables loose like that, even if it does fit properly into your torch, that if, if you don't do this up tight enough and it's shaking in there while you're cutting, what you're basically doing is, every time you pull the trigger, you're burning out the bottom here of the seat where the um, electrode sits. And over time, and it doesn't even take that much time, it'll start to pit and arc and pit and pit and pit. And then you'll get to the stage where you, you, when you go to put your new consumables in, that they won't even fit anymore. They'll, they'll fit in the hole, but it'll be quite loose. And then when you try and put the whole lot together, no matter how hard you screw it up, you can't get the thing tight. It'll just rock around loose like that like all the time. Now, there's a quick fix for that. And uh, I actually uh, figured it out the first time when I brought some consumables and I had a really good torch and it wasn't burned out or anything and they were just loose and I couldn't tighten them up very tight. So uh, yeah, like I said, there's a quick fix for that and it only takes 10 seconds. All you need is a washer, basically. Just get yourself a washer and we've all got washers lying around but the only thing is you've got to make sure that the diameter of the washer is about the same as what the, the bottom is of your... Um, Cutting tip, see that? It's almost the same, almost the same diameter there. Doesn't matter if it's a fraction bigger, it's just that you don't want it a lot bigger, so you want it about the same. And uh, what you're gonna have to do is you get your washer and just drill it out, drill the washer out to the same size, just a little bit bigger than what your tip is. So we'll do that now. So get your washer that you've had lying around the workshop, well, I've got boxes of them, so uh, the chances are you won't have it on the right size, so you just, just do a little modification. So get your washer, and make sure it's about the same size as the uh, as the bottom of your cutting tip. So it's about the same about the same roundness as the bottom of your cutting tip, like that. Then what you do is just stick them in a vise. Stick them in a vise, drill like it out, and get the your same size your your washer as the uh, as the no cutting nozzle. So you get a drill the same size as that maybe a little bit bigger, and uh, drill them out. Take them out of the vise, and you should have something that looks like this, just you wash it like you had before, but you've just drilled the hole so that it'll, your nozzle will fit through it. So that your nozzle will fit in there like so. Like that. Cool. So if we reassemble this torch like so, put that in there. And like I say, I'm not sure if it's the consumables or it's the torch, but one or the other, there's one that's just a fraction smaller than the other. So all you have to do is do one of these washers. You only need one and just keep it in your drawer and you can do it any time if you, if you strike this trouble. Or you start to arc out the bottom of your torch and you can't tighten up your um, tighten up your electrodes and your tips. So all you do is do that washer thing like I showed you. So we've done the washer. We did it in the vise before and here it is here. Like that, any washer will do as long as the diameter is about the same as the bottom of your cutting tip. So you don't want it any, any much wider than your cutting tip on the bottom because then you're going to have trouble putting your, your shield on. So what you do is you put your washer over the top like so. Now with that, make sure that you've got your washer there on top of your cutting tip. Don't put it on top of the swirl ring because it won't work because all that'll do is it'll push out the, the distance between the electrode and, and the inside of your cutting tip and it won't work anymore. It, the distance will be wrong in your, in your torch. So what you need to do is put it on top like that and then what you need to do is Screw up your, your shield like so, and there you go, you're as tight as, and it'll still work perfectly fine. But make sure you put that washer where I told you to put it, on top of your cutting tip, not below it, because it won't work below it. Get the washers in here now, 
So when you don't want to use it anymore, you just flick it out with a screwdriver like that and gone. No worries. And also another thing with these is these swirl rings, especially on the PT31 or the LG40. These have little, um, have little holes in them like that. And you'll find that when they get old and brittle, they start to crack like so. And once they start cracking, like I say, the arc arcs through it and your torch will start pulsating and it won't cut properly. So uh, yeah, these are removable, that's easy enough, just to replace them. And also your, uh, your ceramic cups like this, I mean this is all right, but when they get brittle, they get cracks in them as well. And they sometimes they just blow apart too. So you've got one here that's um, blown apart. See that? It's just blown completely apart. But sometimes they'll go like that and they'll just have a hairline crack in them and then it'll arc through here and then your torch won't cut properly either and it just sucks really. So uh, what you need to do is just keep an eye on all these. All these are the cheapest chips to buy. So uh, just keep an eye on it. And just remember that, that washer thing, guys. This washer thing here can save a lot of grief. Even if your torch is worn out, put a washer in to, to hold your consumables in there tight again and you'll get another few months out of, your, out of your plasma torch. Anyway, guys, that's about it for the day. If you like my video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, and we'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. <music>